Today we're finally taking a look at the Mecklenburg, and this ship is one that I've been interested in for quite a while. I finally got enough steel to get it, and honestly, it's a little underwhelming. I thought it was going to be a little bit better than what I've experienced so far. The important thing to notice here is the guns. They're only 305 millimeter caliber, but they actually have 16 of them and a fast reload. At long range, it seems like this ship wants to be an HE spammer. It's got decent enough alpha. It feels pretty low, but honestly, the best part or the worst part potentially is the fire chance. 27% fire chance is pretty good, but it's not quite good enough to guarantee a lot of fires like something a Thunderer or Conqueror might be able to. And that's one of the biggest issues that comes up with playing Mecklenburg. It's this gun caliber. Yes, the accuracy is quite nice. Battlecruiser dispersion formula, good Sigma to go along with that, and a lot of guns. But this caliber, the sl small caliber AP, is really quite bad at long range. At close range, as we're going to see in a little bit, it's pretty monstrous. But at long range, which is the majority of tier 10 games, this ship tends to want to spam HE. And HE spam with a battleship is not always going to work out so well. It's really only good on ships like Thunderer, Conqueror, and even Borgone to a certain extent because of their reload and insanely high fire chance. The Conqueror Thunderer, it's more that fire chance, pretty much guaranteed to have a fire, and Borgone can always pop its reload booster and be essentially guaranteed a fire as well. Mecklenburg doesn't really have this. It should theoretically get a lot of fires, but that doesn't always come out in practice. So then that leaves us with the armor piercing and at range, yeah, it's not great. At least it's good enough against cruisers, but even then you don't overmatch very much. We're gonna see later on against a Seattle at longer ranges, I'm gonna be bouncing quite a few shells, but at least against a Neptune, yes, that dispersion helps and our armor piercing is just enough to take him out in one shot. <laughs> always nice to get a devastating strike off the bat, and you'll notice how aggressive I'm playing this ship. I've been led to believe by a lot of the coverage of the Mecklenburg so far that it's a mid-range HE spammer camping kind of ship. And I played it like that for several games before this one and it, they all really did not go very well. So I'm gonna show you this one, not my first game, but this is the first day of me playing the Mecklenburg. So I'm gonna give you my first impressions based on this one. It actually went really, really well. I push extremely aggressively here. Honestly, the enemy team has way more forces here, but I thought that if I got to this island, it'd be very difficult to dig me out since I have torpedoes and, well, 16 guns is gonna hurt any ship that comes around a corner. We managed to absolutely nuke that new Strashimi, and that was with the armor piercing too, by the way. So if I had had HE, it's possible I would have dev struck that guy. And that would have been hilarious to have two devastating strikes back to back, but still a really good start, much, much better than any of the other games that I had played earlier. Although I'm stuck a little bit on this island. The biggest problem though, alongside these small caliber guns, is these turret angles. They're worse than the Kerr first even. That's really, really, really bad. The Kerr first, one of its biggest weaknesses is the turret angles, forcing you to go broadside and making your armor relatively useless. Sure, you're not gonna eat citadels at close range, but that doesn't matter when somebody's able to do 30 to 40K into your broadside belt armor. And that also shows up with the Mecklenburg. On top of that, we have much lower HP. Here it shows 90k, but well, this is the <laughs> replacement of Epicenter Arms Race. It's basically Arms Race with a few extra steps, giving the winning team some buffs to ensure they steamroll even harder. I'm really, really not a fan of Arms Race, if you couldn't tell. It seems to be a worse game mode in every way than the outgoing Epicenter was. And Epicenter was really not good. That was a really steamrolly game mode as well. But this armor piercing, yeah, a 30k salvo followed up by a 20k salvo. We've nearly two shot this poor bomber. <laughs> so even though I really do think the Mecklenburg feels like a tier nine, seemingly we're able to beat up on this tier nine bomber reasonably easily. We're gonna pick up our third kill there and up to 146k damage. I wanna emphasize though, that my games really didn't all look like this. This just happened to be the one match where 
I played aggressive and it happened to work out. I played more aggressive in a few games after this and ended up dying very quickly since this ship doesn't have a lot of HP and it's got this gigantic superstructure as a weakness. It doesn't have a fast cooldown heal. It doesn't have a special damage control that gives you a few charges, but they reload really quickly and there's no hydro. So if you're looking to push in and make use of this amazing armor piercing at close range, you gotta watch out for torpedoes now all of a sudden. So if this ship really is not designed to be a brawler, the no hydro, the atrocious firing angles, there you can see five bounces off of the Seattle as a quick note that I referenced earlier. Yeah, not a lot of overmatch at range. But as far as close range is concerned, the typical stomping grounds of a German battleship, no hydro and even worse turret angles than the GK means the ship is gonna struggle a little bit at close range, especially when we take into account the lower than average HP pool and that this hull isn't really a GK hull and it's not really a Freddy hull, it's somewhere in between, which is really not a good thing since both of those ships aren't the best hulls in the world. So if it's not great at close range, then medium range is where it should be pretty good. But at that point, we're starting to get to the limits of what the armor piercing is capable of. Shattering on a lot of battleship belt armor is extremely common as we get outside the 10 kilometer range area. And as for cruisers, I'm gonna do okay damage still, but that relies on you hitting a pretty specific part of those ships. And that's assuming they don't angle. There's no improved pen angles here on the AP. And with this low caliber, yeah, we're gonna be bouncing quite a lot off of any remotely angled cruisers. And at long range, yes, we can try spamming the high explosive, but it's really down to the luck of the draw when it comes to your fire chance with that HE, since the alpha isn't all that amazing. So to me, the Mecklenburg seems mediocre to bad at mid, close, and long ranges. Overall, the Borgone is better at it at everything. At long range, it's gonna do way better armor piercing damage compared to the AP on the Mecklenburg. The HE will be similar, but then the Borgone gets a reload booster to guarantee more of those fires. At mid range, the AP is more consistent and reliable on the Borgone than it is on the Mecklenburg. Again, the HE is still just a little bit better on the Borgone as well, I would say. And at close range, even though Mecklenburg seems to have the edge in terms of armor, I think the better turret angles on the Borgone with the addition of a reload booster make it even better at close range at finishing off targets. It won't last quite as long as the Mecklenburg, but with this gigantic superstructure on this German battleship, it's not like it's going to be able to tank for particularly long as well. This game, I managed to get myself a Kraken. We might even be able to uh, yoink a sixth kill here, which, you know, doesn't happen particularly often. Six kills is a pretty good result and maybe even get ourselves up to 200K. Notice the dispersion being pretty good. It's still battleship dispersion. Battle cruiser formula though, but it's still a battleship. It's not like this thing is going to be a laser. It's not going to be ultra consistent. And at longer ranges, I've found this armor piercing just doesn't have the pen to compete with a lot of the other tier 10 battleships, especially against a lot of the armor at tier 10. It's actually decent armor. Most of the time though, we're firing such gigantic guns that we don't really notice. As soon as we step down to this lower caliber, I tend to notice that the AP is just a little bit weaker. And at the HE, well, it's reliant on RNG to get those fires. Something I haven't mentioned quite yet is the concealment. With all of these downsides and the ship being focused on mid-range and having smaller than average main guns, you'd think the concealment would be good. But with my build where I'm just lacking the captain skill upgrade for concealment, it's 15.4 kilometers. It's very average for a tier 10 battleship. I'm, if I'm taking the upgraded captain skill yet too, we're in that 13.9, 14 kilometer range concealment. And when you compare that against some of its competition, I think the most crazy example is buffed Vermont. Yeah, 12.6 with Vermont guns sounds pretty nasty. I'm definitely going to be making a video on that soon. But getting back to the Mecklenburg, it just seems like a very underwhelming tier 10. If this was a tier nine, oh my goodness, it'd be an unbelievable ship. They'd probably have to tone it down just a little bit to put it at tier nine. But if this was a tier nine ship, I could totally see it. But at tier 10, it just seems a little bit weak to me. 
The build that I've been using, if you're wondering, looks a little like this. It's my hybrid battleship build where I'm sneaking in a few secondary upgrades. I'm of course focused on main guns in the upgrade slots, but I wanna get a little bit of fun out of my secondaries. But with this ship, I'm thinking of changing that. I'm thinking of actually dropping secondaries altogether, focusing up more on concealment and trying to play a little better at mid range. I'm taking Grease the Gears since these starts are reasonably quick, but given the nature of the Mecklenburg, more of a battle cruiser cruiser role, we want to be swapping guns from either side a little bit more. That's pretty nice to have. And I think it's a must to have gun feeder. This HE AP swapping is just required on this ship. Neither shell type is particularly amazing until you get to close range where I would say the AP is very good, but at mid to long ranges, taking the absolute best ammo type is required to get the most out of this ship. There's no being lazy and just shooting AP and it's gonna do fine because you got some overmatch and decent pen. That doesn't happen here. You have to shoot HE at angled targets. You have to shoot AP at broadside targets if you wanna do well in this thing. I've taken, of course, main battery mod three since 22 kilometers is really good, especially for a German battleship. Concealment mod, I'm also taking the steering gears option to hopefully negate a little bit of the weakness of these turret angles. That way I can swing out, get my back turrets online firing, and then hopefully angle back in before the enemy's salvo comes and crushes me. Again, I'm taking aiming systems mod one, pretty standard outside of this. I was really shocked though to find no hydro on this ship. I would have loved to have a hydro instead of a spotting aircraft, especially given the decent base range already. There is a defensive fire, but as we all know, it doesn't really do anything. So this is just here to, I don't know, look pretty, I guess. As far as the Mecklenburg though, that's the first impressions. I'm not very excited about this ship and I really do think Borgone is a way, way better option. I will be coming with a full review eventually, but I gotta play the ship a lot more and really figure out its play style. Currently, I really don't know what the best way to play it is, and that might be why I'm not very excited about it. But that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.